Today we're driving the all new 2021 Nissan Armada. Well, it's not really all new, it's just had a nice facelift. We've got a slightly redesigned front end, a new Nissan logo, and uh, some changes to the interior, mostly this center stack area. This is a 5.6 liter V8, makes 400 horsepower, 413 pound feet of torque. This SL that we have today is rear wheel drive only, so not as much off-road capability as the Armada is known for with its four wheel drive variant. We have independent suspension front and rear, captain's chairs in the second row, and a third row seating arrangement as well. This thing is enormous. It's a land yacht. In other markets, it's fondly known as the Nissan Patrol. It's a beast. Oh yes. It can tow up to 8,500 pounds. Not long ago, we test drove the Infiniti QX80, which is the more luxurious brother of this Armada. I do like the new front end redesign. I think it looks quite good. These new headlights, these DRLs, the grill, the Nissan logo is looking sharp. Still though, don't be fooled. This is the same old Nissan Armada that we have gotten to know over the last, I don't know, it's been a while. I don't know how long this thing has been out, but it's been a minute. Slightly different rear end, taillights. We still have these massive whale-like proportions with a little bit of an underbite. <laughs> Pop in the rear tailgate. We've got a pretty slow opening speed, but a lot of room back here. Put my mountain bike back here the other day and there was still just so much more space for activities. It's pretty amazing. This third row, you can't quite lift it up from back here, but you can easily put everything down. All of your seat controls are manual. This SL comes in around $56,000. As equipped, it's around 60 grand with a few little extras, illuminated sill plates, the captain's seating arrangement, a couple other options. Let's see what this third row is like. All this lifts up pretty easily. You've got a nice headrest right there. Not a lot of space back here, but I think kids would be okay. Oh yeah, you could definitely squeeze some of the kids back there. That gives you a pretty good idea of the legroom. The floor is pretty high. It's gotta make room for that drive shaft and uh, independent rear suspension. Put this headrest down though, just so I can see a bit easier. Not too difficult to get out of the third row with this large opening. And this foot step is nicely placed. This is one of those SUVs where you do actually need that assistance. The second row seats recline quite a bit, so that makes things a little bit more comfortable. You've got a lot of space back here, tons of legroom. Set to my driving position at five foot ten, I can almost extend my legs fully. A couple of cup holders, a lot more storage space. I like that they've lined the inside of these cubbies with a felt material. You can also have another little storage solution right there that gives you access to underneath the center console. Rear climate control. I mean, this is still, this is not the QX80, it's the Armada. We do have heated front seats, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, both available as wireless options. Let's set up front and see where some of these new additions are in the 2021 Armada. You'll notice we've got a lot of the same design language and carryover for switches and controls from the previous years. If you get a four wheel drive model, here's your drivetrain selection switch. You can switch between a four high, four low. Similar controls here. They've gone and redesigned the center area. You've got a little bit of a, a wireless charging solution right there and a phone holder. Nice cigarette lighter port right there. I like putting being able to put your phone in there and it'll wirelessly charge. Buttons and knobs for your climate control. And then actually a pretty familiar looking infotainment. They haven't really changed a whole lot there. You've got a pretty large screen though. Easy to use, not a lot of settings hidden deep within the menus. Uh, you've got the center screen right here too. Lots of gauges, displays, options. Again, not that complicated, which I do like. 
This also has trailer brake control, trailer sway control, all those good things. The reverse camera strangely still kind of looks like it was an aftermarket add-on. It even says mod in the upper corner. Where this Nissan Armada really shines is under the hood. This 5.6 liter V8 is a beast. It makes all the right noises. It has incredible power and torque and made it to the seven speed automatic. It does a pretty nice job shifting for you as well. Let's take this Armada on the road and see how it drives. We'll also be doing a sound system test at the end of this video. I like that we still have a traditional gear selector right there. Setting off, this is a very smooth SUV to drive. The driving position is super high. All the controls are light to the touch. Ride quality is pretty nice too, thanks to the independent front and rear suspension. I always wonder why people buy rear wheel drive variants of these big SUVs. This is such an off-road capable SUV. There's so much uh, of these that are being used in the Middle East and in Australia and all over the world for really pretty rigorous off-road work. They're very capable, and the rear-wheel drive just kind of kind of gets rid of a lot of that, but there must be a market for them somewhere. On our bumpy road section, this Armada rides really well. Not really phased. You get into higher speed stuff, and it tends to bounce around a little bit. We've got a few rattles in the back coming from the seats. Pretty common with any three-row SUV where there's a lot of uh, seat movement and configurability in the back. Let's listen to that 5.6 liter V8 sing. No real complaints about the powertrain. Doesn't get the best fuel economy, 14 in the city, 19 on the highway. This week we've averaged around 18 or so MPG and a lot of mixed driving. Very comfortable over bumps and uh, rough pavement. It drives about how it looks. It's a big SUV and it definitely doesn't hide a lot of its weight. Very comfortable on the highway. Got a good radar guided cruise control system. It does have a haptic feedback steering wheel that will vibrate whenever you stray out of your lane if you have that system engaged. Pretty quiet at speed too, a little bit of wind noise, but overall it's very comfortable, very pleasant in here. Brake pedal feels nice. We do have a lot of black shiny surfaces and as a result you get a lot of reflection from the sun at certain angles and even though it's black it's still blinding we've got a little bit right there and after a few days of after you've cleaned it it gets pretty dusty pretty fingerprinty pretty gross looking um, i do wish manufacturers would start to move away from gloss black in car interiors it just isn't the move All right, let's see how this handles a corner. Ooh, actually pretty good at the limit. That independent suspension coming into play front and rear there. Nice and neutral, doesn't cut you off like the all the Chevy products do these days with its with their very uh, intrusive stability control system. Pretty nice handling SUV. And I'm sure this Armada being rear wheel drive feels a little bit lighter, a little bit more agile than 
a four-wheel drive variant. I would still swing for a four-wheel drive system in your Armada just because it raises that capability so much. If you're going to be doing any road tripping or adventuring or camping or you just want to take this Armada places where maybe other SUVs can't go that aren't body on frame, tough, rugged SUVs, this will probably get you there, no problems. It doesn't have the best approach and departure angles, but ground clearance is decent and uh, for the most part should get you where you need to go. There's some cool traction control systems and four low and all that good stuff that, that get you through a lot of rough terrain in the four wheel drive version. This rear wheel drive variant, um, it's gonna be your standard mall crawler. If you live in a climate where uh, you don't see a lot of snow or inclement weather, or you just aren't gonna be doing any adventuring with your Nissan Armada, you're just gonna be hauling stuff and people, then, well, this is probably a good option. You can save about four grand from the four wheel drive version. I think that's around the price difference. Base price on this is 56,000 bucks. As tested, this is a $60,000 Armada. Eh, it's kind of getting up there in price. There's a lot of competition in this segment. This is probably kind of mid, mid to lower pack, I would say. And, uh, but you know, definitely some things here worth looking at for the new 2021 model year. This new center stack looks good in practice. I wish it weren't gloss black. It kind of just, it's blinding me occasionally on nice days. Uh, otherwise, though, the infotainment, the screen looks good. It's tilted back a little bit, so it makes it difficult to use as a touch, touch screen. But luckily, you do have this scroll wheel that you can uh, use to select things, too. So that's nice. It's a responsive, uh, easy-to-use system. Not a lot of settings and stuff hidden in the infotainment. There's a little bit with the driver assistance uh, that's hidden in the center menu. I do wish you could easily turn on and off lane keep assist, stuff like that. But honestly, if you own this vehicle, you're either going to have it on or you're going to have it off and you're going to live with it that way. So again, not a major complaint. The ergonomics in here are super user-friendly, very easy to live with. Something that Nissan has been doing really well lately is they've been sticking with buttons and knobs and dials. And I thank them for that because I think it just makes a little bit more pleasant of an ownership experience. Could use a little bit more third row space. Uh, but for throwing kids back there, they'll be just fine. They're small. Otherwise, a lot of capability here, tons of towing, lots of cargo capacity. All right, well, let's do one more walk around on this new Armada. Show you guys some of the exterior styling. And we will go right into the sound system test. We still have a foot operated parking brake. Kind of cool. Good amount of fuel range in this Armada too. 392 miles and I'm just below full tank. So over a full tank would give me over 400 miles of range, which is quite good. I do like some of the new front end designs Nissan has been doing lately. These new wheels look pretty sharp. Otherwise, from the side profile, though, this is pretty much unchanged, of course. Still got that massive space right here. A lot of gloss black everywhere. <laughs> All right, let's listen to this audio system. I assume this is just the bass audio. Go into our sound system, sound system test track playlist. One thing Nissan is really nailing these days is just their ergonomics. This is such an easy car to use. You've got big volume controls and knobs, track selection. It makes it easy on you. impressions are good. Sound system is nice.
pretty well for a big three row SUV. The more you push it, the more it gives you. And for a bass audio system, sounds pretty good. No complaints. Nice bass, pretty clear. No distortion. It's definitely not class leading, but it's a pretty decent audio system. All right, guys, that'll wrap up the Nissan Armada for this week. We've also got some videos on Winding Road Magazine and on Daily Motor talking about this big SUV. Head on over there if you want to see some more videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.